podcast, a place where you can keep informed of the latest business and tech trends by listening to stories of other people in your field and how they are overcoming challenges with emerging technologies. Join me in learning from the guests actionable tips and lessons learned to obtain greater clarity on how you or your business can leverage technology. Today, I want to explore how customer obsession, retention, and loyalty, and how personalization drives true customer loyalty, and also how technology is transforming how customers perceive loyalty on a global basis. In November last year, a company called Imarsis, which is a SAP company, they unveiled part one of its second annual customer loyalty index. And in January this year, they're now delving into what will drive customer loyalty in 2023 and beyond based on the findings from their loyalty index and Forrester research. And one of the big key takeaways was the disconnect between markers and their customers. So I wanted to learn more about this, what it means for marketers, consumers, MarTech, technology companies and everything in between. And Megan York leads product solutions marketing for SAP Imarsis, and she's got a wealth of experience in this space as a result of a successful career in product marketing at Ticketmaster, Salesforce, and also has specialities including executive leadership, sales marketing strategy, B2B and B2C customer acquisition, retention, thought leadership. What I'm trying to say is she knows her stuff, and I'm very privileged to have her on the podcast today. So buckle up and hold on tight because I'm going to beam your ears all the way to Indiana where Megan is waiting to share her story. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Um, Thank you guys so much for having me. And thanks for everyone to listening today. Uh, My name is Megan York. I am a senior vice president of product marketing uh, for a company called Emarsis that is a business unit, uh, unit of SAP. Um, and in Amarsis, we are the omni-channel engagement platform that brings power to the marketer, which means we enable marketing teams to reach uh, their customers with personalized content and offers, um, you know, through all the channels that their customers want to interact with them. Well, I'm looking forward to finding out more about what you do there. But we have a bit of a tradition on this podcast, and I always like to take my guests back in time to how okay. they got their role. So if I take you way back in the time machine, can I ask you to share your your origin story, where your passion for tech might have come from, or or just a moment that would put you on this path you're on today? Sure. So, um, you know, I really started my career in startup land and startup marketing, Um, And for anybody on the line who has listened or worked for a startup company before, you know that you are the brand marketer and the demand gen marketer, the product marketer, (laughs) you're the the web map, you know, you're like everything all at once. Um, And then the startup that I was working for actually got acquired by a much larger company that had, um, you know, this product marketing function really Um, entrenched in their culture. And, you know, I kind of through them got to learn what product marketing was and how, you know, as the product marketer, you're kind of a mini CMO of your product where you are, you know, working, working with all the different departments to try to create demand and, you know, enable your sales team to sell the product and all of those things. And so, um, and I'm guess I'm a little bit of a tech nerd at heart. So I really love to um, understand how technology works and be able to translate that, you know, into value for for our customers or our prospects. So that is how I landed here. Wow, what a great story! <laughs> uh, that path obviously will eventually lead you to Emarsis, which is an SAP company. So, can you tell me more about the story behind the company and and some of the problems that you set out to solve with technology at Emarsis? Sure, sure. So, um, yes. So, Emarsis was acquired by SAP a, a few years ago, and we are the you know marketing arm of of SAP's customer experience offering. So, you know, SAP offers customer experience technology for sales and service and commerce. Um, you know, for a for data strategy, and then and we're the the arm that gets to serve marketers. And I may be biased as a marketer myself, but um, I think that our job is is really fun and challenging because marketing is such a, um, I mean, it's, I mean, 
even, you know, I don't want to age myself, but um, even just in the time I've been doing it, you know, it has evolved so, so much where uh, marketers really are touching all the different parts of customer experience and all the different parts of the business. You know, you could argue that there are um, components of service, you know, that are marketing and, and, you know, obviously the connection to sales, it's always been there, but marketers touch all these different areas of customer experience. And so it's been fun to, you know, be on that ride and see how, technology has enabled marketers to kind of be everywhere all at once internally and where their customers are um, and really like empower them to create those relationships with their customers. And what put you on my radar? I think it was back in November when I was looking at a few MarTech trends. And I think you unveiled your second annual customer loyalty index. And that's something I, I thought I'd invite you on here to talk a little bit more about. But can you offer a little background on that customer loyalty index and uh, who you surveyed, et cetera? So we interviewed um, over 11,000 consumers on what makes them loyal um, and, and really found out some some interesting things, which was, you know, customers want to be known. They want to be seen. They want you to understand the things that they want and they want to marketers to offer that personalization every single time they interact with them. And that is what then creates, you know, creates the loyalty. Um, and as we go into these, you know, I'm sure people are saying this term all the time, but these uncertain economic times where marketers across the board are having to tighten their belts and figure out, you know, um, where they're budgets can be spent most effectively thinking about loyalty and thinking about how you create more loyalty in the customers you've always had is going to be really top of mind uh, for marketers as well. Yeah, it's so important at the moment. I mean, as we record this podcast, I think uh, Microsoft have announced the loss of 10,000 plus jobs, Google doing the same. There is so much un- uncertainty out there at the moment, and we're seeing the ripples across every industry. So I, I think uh, loyalty is more important to businesses more than ever. But what would you say that the biggest takeaways from this report are? Yeah, I mean, what I think the biggest takeaways from the report and also from retailers that we talk to is just that you know, marketers are going to need to figure out how to, as they think about cost cutting measures and all of those things, continue to, you know, live up to the values that they have established and continue to um, show that value for their cu- to their customers. You know, it, the customers, um, things can't just be so transactional. You know, customers really need to be able to feel like they are gaining value from operating or interacting with that with that particular customer or with that particular brand, um, and and when when customers receive that value exchange, then in t- you know in turn makes them much more loyal to that particular brand. And if we step back for a moment, what do you think all this means for marketers? In uh, if you look at that report. If you, if you haven't been thinking about a loyalty strategy, you should be thinking about that now. If you haven't been thinking about how you can, um, you know, harness all of the data that you have about customers to understand where they are in their journey with you, uh, you know, what kinds of products and offers would they uniquely be interested in um, and how you then are, are, you know, what is your channel strategy and how are you serving those up, you know, across all of the channels that your customers want to interact with you. You need to be thinking about that, that type of thing. And, you know, loyalty sort of kicks off in the very beginning with really a, a first party data strategy. So you can't, in turn, you know, create loyalty with your customers if you don't, you know, have that first party data uh, about them. And so, you know, that's where we're also encouraging our customers to think again about um, the idea of value exchange. So, you know, making sure that if if customers are going to give you their information, if they are going to opt in, um, that you're offering them something that they want in exchange, in exchange for that. So those are sort of some of the brass tax way. I think we're like encouraging people to, Um, you know, really hone in on their loyalty strategy, their omni-channel strategy, their personalization strategy, you know, and figure out what they can do with the resources maybe they already have available to them. And more recently here in January 2023, you also released some additional research around loyalty again. So can you share some highlights on this uh, as as well? Because there's a lot of insights between the two. And I'm curious what was new in this uh, additional research? 
Yeah. Well, you know what? The interesting thing we found out there was like a little bit of a disconnect between what consumers wanted, uh, you know, brands to focus on and then what, what brands were focusing on. So mm. your brands kind of saying like offering um, customer service, you know, better customer service was kind of the number one thing for them going into 2023. And, and you maybe, you know, in some ways companies are thinking out of service as the way to loyalty, you know, if, if they offer better service then maybe they will in turn have loyal customers, But when we asked consumers, they were very specific about wanting to be rewarded for their loyalty. So, you know, the, you know, customers are seeing a lot of brands do things right. And then I think they're expecting all the brands they interact with to be doing those things. Um, But I think it, it really goes back to, you know, kind of what I said earlier, which is really the fundamentals of marketing, right? We've been talking about these things for a long time. And I know different companies are at different places in their maturity with this, but it is, you know, harnessing the data that you have, uh, bringing that together to be able to understand where their customer, you know, where that customer is in their relationship with you, understanding the the offers or you know what do they find valuable, and then serving that serving that up to them. And and our research says that 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 rewarding of that loyalty is what customers want to see first. And of course, you live and breathe this space. So I'm curious, if you were to take the the insights from both pieces of research, was there anything in there that surprised you at all? You know, probably the the disparity or like the disparity between yeah. you know, consumers and and the marketers that responded was a little bit surprising to me because as we talk to our customers, um, loyalty is top of mind for them because they do realize that it costs so much more to acquire new customers. You know, there are so many rules and regulations now on what we can do with customer data and that have kind of, excuse me, more difficult to acquire customers. And so the the, the retailers we work with, um, you know, we see in our customer base loyalty really being top of mind, top of mind for them. And we will have people listening all around the world. If we were to take all the insights from both pieces of research, uh, what would you say would be the big takeaway is for businesses, marketers, retailers, et cetera? What would be those those few takeaways that you would imagine everyone would take away from those research? Well, I think you can't talk about loyalty. You can't talk about um, any of these concepts that we pull down the port without thinking about what it means to be omni-channel. So we, you know, we've learned over other research, actually not in this report, we do a lot of research at Amarsis, you know, that customers are going to interact with you uh, probably before they make a purchase in six different channels. And so, you know, marketers really need to be thinking about how customer behavior is changing, what channels their customers want to interact with them most. You know, we say omni-channel, but the term omni-channel means something different for every brand because it really depends on where your customers want to interact with you, right? And so when we talk about knowing customers, it's not just, um, you know, it's not just understanding the offers they want. It's, it's also understanding in what channel that they they want to interact with you the most and then, and then you know, offering up the, that value, Um, those incentives, those rewards in the place where they want to be interacting with you most. And that in itself then encourages loyalty, right? Because you're catering to their needs, you're catering to how they want to interact with you. So I think it's this, you know, really um, right now, interesting intersection between creating that loyalty through an an omni-channel strategy and, and personalization within those channels. I mean, I think, you know, everybody should be thinking about that, uh, be thinking about that right now we just can't get away from it yeah 100 percent with you on that and i love chatting with you today finding out some of those hidden insights from both pieces of the research there and we started the podcast today talking about your origin story i'm gonna have a bit of fun with you before i let you go now and ask (laughs) you to uh, share your favorite song that we can add to our spotify playlist i ask every guest this question so uh, guilty pleasures are allowed all i'm going to ask is what what song are you going to leave us with and why well, I, I'm going to go a little deep here. So yeah. my favorite song is called Head Full of Doubt, Road Full of Promise by the Avett Brothers. So I don't know if you're familiar with them. Um, but I, first of all, I love the song title because I think it shows that like anytime possibility is being, uh, you know, opened up to you as a person, there's always like a little bit of doubt in your mind, whether you're going to be able to like actually take advantage of it or succeed or, you know, it's going to work out. Um, and my favorite line of that song is decide what to be and go be it. Um, I love this idea that, you know, the, the road is open to us to, to be whatever we want to be, but if we, we need to like be thoughtful about our choices and then kind of like 
go all the way on on whatever choice that we've made. So there you go. I always awesome. listen to the song right before I'm going to make a big decision in my life. Awesome. I absolutely love that. I think I saw them at a Glastonbury Festival over here about five or six years ago. Brilliant. Yeah. But I'm not yeah. I'm not familiar with that song, so I'm going to be checking that out. Add it I'll... on. It'll get inspired. <laughs> yep. We'll get that added straight to the Spotify <laughs> playlist as well. But, but where is the best place for everyone listening to find more about you or, or contact your team or just to find out more information about anything we talked today? Talked yeah, about so, today. Um, visit amarsis.com. It's where we have, you know, um, a lot of the different, like the loyalty index. It's where we have a lot of like a new omni-channel report. All of that great research is on our website. So go visit us there. Oh, so much I loved about talking with you today, especially some of those hidden insights from the Customer Loyalty Index, the great work that you're doing. But I think more than anything, it was your inspiring origin story and washdown down oh. with a great tune too. But <laughs> thanks for sharing that with me today. Thanks so much for having me. So what does customer loyalty mean to you? What does personalization mean to you? Have you got good examples of personalization and creepy examples, whatever it may be? I want to hear all sides of the story here because... As Megan said, there is somewhat of a disconnect between what marketers are doing and what customers expect. So I want to get all that out here. Let's talk about it together. So please email me, techblogwriteroutlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, at Neil C. Hughes. Let's keep this going. I know that every podcast you listen to will have a message from your host telling you to please leave a rating and review. But in a world where we're all ruled by algorithms, it really does help the show reach more listeners. So please, if you've enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving us a review. But more than anything, just a big thank you for listening today. Hope you'll join me again tomorrow. But until next time, don't be a stranger. Don't be a stranger.